hand here we have a 2001 GTX DI. Uh, had a little bit of damage done. What? That was perfect timing. Uh, it came off the lift and uh, I guess it rolled around pretty good. Broken up here, a few scratches, dash and buttons, everything here is all toasted pretty bad. Uh, more scratches up here, nose is missing, but underneath is pretty, pretty bad. So this one's not gonna be a survivor. Yeah, this one's gonna be a parts machine. Nozzles busted off too. So I think the plan is to pull the motor out, uh, but before I do that, I'm gonna start it up. We'll put a battery in. I believe the return line is off uh, to the fuel tank, so we're just gonna pop that back on. And fire this thing up just to be sure it's running, check the compression, and then we're gonna pull it all apart. It'd be nice to know if there's any issues before I go and pop that engine in a, into another machine. So, yeah, let's put this thing in the garage and start uh, digging into it. There's the return, there's the return line right there. It's got just a little pipe stuffed in there. So we're gonna reconnect it back up to there and hook up a battery and see what happens. I don't see any oil in the oil tank. She looks bone dry. A little bit in there. I'm gonna double check that before we fire it up. And battery going in. Those screws are just barely long enough to catch. Now what I just remembered is uh, I don't have a key for it. The uh, guy bought it from one to keep the key. So we got to program up a key. I'm just gonna see if we get anything on the dash. Oh yeah, oil's low, we knew that. But there is a little bit of oil in there. And I did uh, hook that line back up, just pushed it back together with a little sleeve inside. So enough to do what we need to do so time to get the CanDo Pro out and program this thing had to do a little searching to find the connector but it's hidden right here so she's plugged in I've never done this without a uh, having the proper tether so let's see what happens here Looking for vehicle, I'll plug in one of these, this one. See if that wakes it up. Yeah, it's reading it. Keys, let's add a normal key. Plug this on to here, and then you watch the, and then right vehicle, no, right vehicle here. Saving data to the MPEM. 
that should be it. That's the low oil. But let's just do a quick fire up and see if she fires. You can already hear something. It's either bearings in the bottom end don't sound healthy. But everything else seems to be functioning as it should. Uh, I am going to now read all the codes, see what they say, and then uh, we'll go to continue on with uh, the teardown. So let's check the codes. This mag TPS out of range, all that stuff is inactive. More TPS stuff, rave, all inactive. My guess is all this stuff was when everything got bashed up and taken apart and then tried to run again. I'm not sure. But uh, I think I would just do a full teardown of the uh, entire machine anyway and uh, assess and then put back together. There's no point in pulling one motor out and just assuming that it's good. So I say we strip this thing down and see what we got. So here we are back in the garage again. Um, this video is going to be a mismatch of videos uh, because I got a problem with the jet boat draining the battery so we're gonna check that out um, over here I have the um, GTX that um, was had come off the lift and is all smashed up and banged up so I got a video on that and I'm also working on this one right here and this one's got me stumped so bad uh, that will come out in the next video of all the different things that I've tried to get this thing to go, but this one might be the one that gets me. Uh, I have tried probably a hundred different things. I mean, I guess that's an exaggeration, of course, but probably 20. Uh, as you can see, I've got coil packs and air injectors and everything trying to get to the bottom of it, but uh, you'll get to see that one in the future. Uh, so right now, uh, we're going to continue on tearing this one all apart. Uh, I'm going to use all these parts uh, for a future project as well. Plus, it gives me uh, a whole whack of parts. I'm always missing something, so now I've got another full set of parts that uh, will fill the drawers up. So let's just continue on ripping this one apart and uh, go from there. Okay, back to some maintenance. This is uh, the 2003 uh sea dew sportster that we rebuilt i don't know three years ago two years ago anyway it's got a parasitic draw i suspect it's the radio but we're gonna go through and test it out and at the same time i guess i gotta fix the battery hold down bracket that uh was made overseas and obviously <laughs> didn't last so i'm gonna pull the battery charger out of here because the battery was dead again if i switch this off it's fine but if i forget to switch it off within two weeks the battery's flat dead so let me pull the battery charger out and then we'll hook up a meter on the battery here uh, amp meter and see what's going on and take off the ground side i guess it's easiest to get at like to drop that nut down into the bilge that way it'll fall under the engine Put a alligator clip on there. And another one on here. Now, 
put it in the 10 amp mode. Nothing. Uh, because the selector switch is off. Point four. Okay, so if I switch this off, it goes down to, well, it says negative 0.1, but that's probably zero. So I'm thinking we're going to start pulling some fuses uh, and see if we can get an indicator as to what's going on. And of course, access to, for the radio fuse or disconnect the power to the radio would be on the positive side of the battery, which is that yellow wire right there. So uh, maybe I got to switch this around. Can I get in there? Eh. Let me do that. Like a genius, instead of taking the wire and putting it on the battery, I hooked it up to the back of the selector. So now I've got to pull this out to unhook the radio, so Phillips screwdriver time. All right, screws are out. Let's see, yeah, you see? Ugh. Okay, unbolt that, and then we'll see what's going on. So for whatever reason, I'm not getting good results with the uh, amp meter, but I'm gonna put the Rhodes uh, receiver right in front of this thing, and you listen. So you hear the spark? I think this radio is drawing current all the time, even when it's off. So I'm going to leave this off and see what the result is because I'm not getting a good uh, reading on the amp meter. So whether it's super low amps or what it is, but uh, it doesn't seem to give me any reading. But I know for sure it's drawing power because it, you can hear it arc. So. I'm going to put this, maybe I should put a switch on that. No, I think I'm going to leave it off for now. We don't use the radio in the boat, so I'm going to leave it off, see what the results are, and then I'll keep you posted. Okay, retest again, putting the amp meter from the radio up to the positive, getting 0.76 milliamps, disconnect the positive, drops right down to zero, which it should put it back on 0.5 turn the radio on and it jumps right up so that is definitely the radio power turn it back off so the radio is off still drawn milliamps disconnect the power down to zero I'm gonna say that that's pretty conclusive that's what the issue was not sure what the story is with that radio or why it does that. So what does that mean? I'd have to have some sort of relay that when I sh shut the boat off, that kills that power, but then you lose your clock and everything else. So let's just leave it disconnected. I like that. And I made up a little aluminum square tube bracket, drilled a couple holes. Now, can I get in there is the next question. I think that's going to work really good. I think that worked out friggin' great. It did. I love it. Okay. Trying to remove the drive shaft. And it is stuck. There's the clip facing down, barely holding on. 
clip removed. This should, there we go. Okay, now we can pull the drive out. So same old routine, taking off all the 10 mil bolts. A little bit of a rear in that bolt, I think. Yeah, that's bent, so that's garbage. Come on, baby. That ring is toast. Pump still spins. Sounds good. Does it split anywhere? Not that I can see. That looks good. So we got a good pump. That's a win. Let's see if the drive shaft is stuck or what's going on. There she is. And winch time. We still have a couple of pipes on the bottom, vents. I gotta lift the motor up to get at them. Oh yeah, oil line still hooked up too. There just isn't enough room to clear that stud. Like I said, I don't care about the hole. Oh, this is ridiculous. As a heads up, I don't normally take these out like this just because I don't care about the hull that I'm getting a little rough with it, but I took the bracket off. That holds the exhaust at the back. It's sitting right here. You can see that. I unbolted that. That gave me a little bit more room, but definitely marked up the hull a bit. But I'm cutting it up and taking it to the dump. There's a vent. What else we got here? Ooh, another line on the compressor. It's gone. Is this one being held down? Yes, it is. Should be a vent on the bottom. Oh yeah, there's a water hook up there from the water box on the bottom. And we got a ground, but there should be a vent too. Oh yeah, here it is. Oh, and the, ah. Two things left. That ground, which will take off and the cable for the oil. Let's get that off. And in three, two, one, she's free. I think, I do think.
Let's put that on the floor for now. How's it look? No holes in the bottom? No. Seem to have some weird noises. Sweet. So engine's out, drive's out. I'm just gonna rip out throttle body and rave solenoids and the exhaust and carbon ring and boot. I'm gonna take out every single um, hose clamp, wiring, elbows, everything. Engine mounts, I wanna have a full setup because uh, depending on what we do next, we may need it all. I'm looking at a jet boat right now, so we'll see how that deal goes. Okay, continuing on. And there she is, GTXDI all stripped down. Got everything off inside the hull. Not much left to her now. Took everything, even the clamshell piece off the front. Don't really need the trim, the sponsons are broken. Studs out of the back. We got, uh, let me get a light. There's one. Yeah, that's a little bit too heavy on the silicone for me to remove that. These plastics here, no value. Maybe plastic washer. Not seeing anything else. Pads, I'm gonna leave, don't need those. Rails, no. So I think that's it. So this thing is off to the uh, junkyard. I mean, the hull, I guess, is probably still okay underneath, but I don't know. Pretty busted up. Not worth it. We got the motor out of it. We got all the parts that we need, rails, fuel rails, and all the wiring harnesses and everything. So I just want to check that motor out, but I think that's going to be a top to bottom tear down. But we're going to just pull the plugs now and roll it over and see if you can hear the bearings in the front end or not. I think that's what I was hearing before. Let's get these plugs out. Huh, not even tight. Oh, those are full of water. How'd that thing even run? Really? Well, that could be why it was running so bad. Let's just roll this thing over. Why am I getting compression with no plugs in it? Kind of want to crank that over with a starter. Why don't we jimmy rig something up? Quick change of plans. Gonna pull the head off this thing. <laughs> and find the pry mark or point right there. Nice and easy. That's probably not the best. Gotta get a better flat blade, I think. Uh, maybe not. Ah. 
pretty damp. Oh my God. <laughs> Gonna have to dry this thing out. That's a little damp. A little bit of a ridge up here from where. This has probably never been opened up before, I don't know. I think I'm gonna spray some oil down there. A lot of water. I'm gonna quickly pull the reeds out of this thing. Reeds look good, but again, just full of water. And another one right full of muck. I mean, what? It's got a light. Pretty mucky in there. I think there's a ton of water in the bottom end of this thing. Ugh. I'm gonna drain that out before we have a problem. I think I'm gonna take the top off too, the jugs. Pull the whole thing off in one shot? I think we can. Where is the prying hole? Can I not get at it with the exit manifold on there? I don't know. Pretty uh, wet in there. So I think I'm gonna flip this sucker upside down and drain it out if we can. Oh yeah, maybe you're hot. She's dripping. <laughs> I'm gonna let that sit and drain out and then I'm gonna spray it down with oil. And obviously this one is going to get a full tear down, cleaning, check everything, new gaskets, reassembly. And then we got two. Then we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with all that. Got a little safety hooked up now. <sighs> I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna end this video here. I had a whole mismatch of things going on. Had a guy come by yesterday, he's got water in his compressor. 
which was pumping up into the fuel rail. Uh, we went through a whole bunch of steps to try and correct that problem. I'm guessing it's water being sucked in through this pipe right here because we changed the top of the compressor just for fun, just to see if there was an issue, put a new gasket on, it was still leaking. Guessing it's coming in here, so I was helping him with that. I'm also working on the GTXDI out there, or RXDI, and that one has a, I don't know, like stutters. Uh, once you get up to about five grand, cannot get to the bottom of it. Changed everything you can think of, so we're working on that as well. And now this, which uh, didn't expect to have to do a full, full tear down, although I kind of like to do that anyway. So I think what we're going to do is stop here. I will get the RXDI sorted out first. Then we'll dive into this one. And then we'll see what happens after that. I'm still trying to do a deal on a boat to pop that in a boat. I'd love to put two 951s in a boat. Whether they'll fit or not, I don't know. So we'll see what comes out of this. Anyway, uh, until the uh, next one, thanks for watching.